Okay, my name's Dean Morrison. I'm 57 years of age now and I began playing guitar when I was four. I was lucky, my father was a guitarist, so there were always guitars around. And I kind of I had the benefit of learning a little bit of a, at a time, but also learning to play on ragged instruments. They weren't, you know, maybe only had three or four strings or uh, weren't especially uh, fine guitars. But um, I learned to find a groove and blues being my love it was something that I. Uh, that's kind of suited me. Anything with blues was would turn me on. And I'm a groove player, so it was all about finding the right groove on the guitar and uh, looking down to lay down a kind of sexy rhythm. Something I could hang maybe a lyric on, something I'd hang my voice, and then some maybe some lead playing as well. So I've developed this style where I could get pretty pretty strong and sexy grooves down with my thumb and it pumps it's powerful. People like it. I like it too, it sounds really good. So I get, once the groove's going, the rest is kind of easy. If the groove is working, then you can start adding melody, you can start adding harmonies, start adding the voice. Yeah, I know, it's interesting. Now, the guitar I use is a Fender Bullet, a little student guitar Fender made back in 1980. And uh, I've modified it a bit, so I, I, it's kind of stereo. I have, a, I have the bass strings go through one amp, so I can keep the bass rich and strong and I use the treble strings to go for another amp. I know it's interesting, you'll hear it tonight. Because when, when you first saw me, what I've done with this kind of audience for Steve Morrison here at Oliver's Jazz Bar, I thought I'll bring the guitars I don't usually use, just to give people something fresh and something fresh for me. Um, so I've got a, a, a Fender, a Yamaha Fender that I use with a, a six string, 12 string setup. Uh, I've got a jazz guitar and, uh, and um, what's the other instrument I use? Oh yeah, it's uh, everything with open tunings. Uh, it was interesting because last time I was here, I mentioned that my favorite guitar, the Fender Bullet, is in the corner. I happened to come from another gig and I said, I'm not using that tonight. I'm using these these other guitars, they look, you know, they're new to me, they're a bit, a bit, I'm not as comfortable with them, they're not my main guitars, but it'll be interesting for you to hear me play and to see me out of my comfort zone. Anyway, as it, most of the session was me chatting with the audience, telling them, you know, they said, oh, when did you like, when did you first start playing school, when did you, when did you realise guitar was important to you, this kind of thing, so there's a lot of banter, anyway, in the end I said to them, you know, that guitar in the case in the corner, that's my... That's my number one guitar. It's called a Scalibur. Do you want to hear what it sounds like? Everybody, like, yeah, let's have a listen. <laughs> I got it out, I plugged it in, and the bass and everything so rich. Honestly, the room took off. It was a fantastic gig, and everyone was dancing, and the music's pumping away. So it was a great night, it's a great night. I'll be honest, I'm not the greatest of students. My guess is that my sister, who's slightly older than me, was probably being taught by my father, and I probably craved some attention too, and took some interest, because I'm left-handed. The guitars we had in the house were. Um, so I just kind of sort of picked it up. And he was able, because obviously I'm living in the house, he would say, try this. So everything was sort of almost a drip drip, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So I, I learned very slowly. I didn't really have to learn the guitar. The guitar was always there. And it was interesting, when I was here last, somebody said, when did you realize the guitar was important to you? And while I had always been playing guitar from a toddler, four, four or five years old, it was, I was a boy scout. And it was, I was about 12 or 13 years old, and I got home from a scouting trip, a, a holiday away, and the first thing I went to was the guitar. And suddenly I realized really then that the guitar was important. Up until then, I just always played the guitar. It was just always there. But around that time, I suddenly thought, no, I missed it. I haven't played the guitar for a week. So rather than go and kiss my mother or go and have a dinner or you know say hello to my father or my sisters, I went and got the guitar. 
and that's when I realised it was very much a part of me. Yeah, that's interesting. It's not that academic. I'm, I'm fairly crude and raw with my approach to music, and I really don't have idols, but the people that taught me the guitar were the old bluesmen. They were Lightning Hopkins, Big Bill Brunsey, Brownie McGee. And it's interesting, I remember my father coming home, he worked in the print, came home early one morning after his night shift at working in the printing industry at four in the morning, and he'd, had some, he'd got some reel-to-reels of a new Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee album. Anyway, four in the morning, the whole house is woken up. My mother, my sisters, my brother. So we all come downstairs, my dad's got some new blues. And so the old reel-to-reel -reel came out and you know we're sitting around, someone's making some tea and stuff like that. And that would be the family sitting around listening to Sonny Terry and Brandon McGee. And my mother tapping me and saying, you know, that's how you play the guitar song. So I would play along with these guys for hours and hours for the love and the pleasure. And I believe that I, I began to I began to appreciate and develop their feel their touch, no, nothing to do with clever notes or running or dexterity or cleverness, just that feel for music that was simple, succinct, but very personal. And that's really where my music has come from, rather than thinking, I mean, I, I like Johnny Winter, I like Frank Zappa, Jimmy Hent, all the greats, but there was something about the feel of this, these old blues guys, the simple stories to tell that, you know, won my heart. That's that's that, that's that's where I see myself having come from. <laughs> Are they my idols? Yes, they're my but they're my teachers. I learned to phrase the way I sing a song from Brandy McGee, Big Bill Brinton. I learned to sit on a very simple groove and make it dynamic from Lightning Hopkins without really copying or... I just wanted to join in, I guess. And it has, it's established itself. I know this Sure, I, it was interesting. I, I'd always seen myself as a blues artist, and, and, and I used to upset my father by coming back with uh, blues versions of his favourite uh, country and folk songs, you know, because they're beautiful melodies, and I turned into raw blues. But it was later on, probably as a young adult, I began to realise that country music informed my songwriting, phrasing, and uh, attitude towards music. So there is country, there's, there's Celtic aspects to my blues. It has that, I sometimes like to think of it as Scottish. My mother and father were born in Glasgow, um, and that, that's, where, that's where my father learned to play guitar and, and was active on the sort of folk scene, and friends and parties were involved guitar playing. Um, so am I Americanised in my accent? I hope not too much, but um, there is that, um, you know, because. In Glasgow, you go dancing. In London, you go dancing. So I feel that I, I'd rather sing about dancing. The other difficulty I think I've found in terms of being a session player is when people book me for sessions, my style tends to take over. So I've worked with other young guys uh, uh, who were, you know, we'd both sit down and we, we'd, we'd be li listening to an Eric Clapton book. And I'd be struggling, I'd nearly, I'd nearly get it, kind of close, but not quite right. But my mate was really good, perfect, got the sounds, just sounded like the Eric Clapton riff. And I was really jealous, because I wanted to copy these people. I tried to copy, I really did. I really wanted to sound like the people I heard. But what happened in the end is I think my failures became my style. That my, and you know, the friends who were good copiers came to me a year or two later and said, Steve, how do you get your own style? So I said, well, it's by fucking up what you learn, you know, by failing to copy exactly. But I would get near enough. And what I found is I would copy someone, and it would be close, but within three or four weeks, it would become mine. It wouldn't sound like 
the person I, I was emulating. It would actually just be part of my repertoire. Baby, please don't go back to your knee. You know I love you so, baby, please. 